One of the most common questions I get asked is which running watch should I buy? The Garmin Forerunner 245 or the Coros Pace 2? Well, let's settle it once and for all. Current retail price for the standard 245 in the UK is £250 and $300 in the US. For the Coros Pace 2, we're talking about £180 in the UK and $200 in the US. So on paper, the Pace 2 is a fair bit cheaper than the 245, but I see regular discounts on the 245. In fact, I only paid £240 for mine, and mine's the music version, which in the UK retails for £300. If you look at the Amazon price history for the non-music variant of the 245, you get a high of £333 and a low of £179 here in the UK. In the US, the highest price has been $280, which is already a $20 saving on the direct retail price. And it's been as low as $215. Similar fluctuations in price can be found on the music version, so it's worth keeping an eye out for discounts. When it comes to the Pace 2, it's not been as easy to get hold of, and it's not been out as long as the 245, so you're unlikely to find a discount on it. In fact, at some points last year, it was actually out of stock. And quite frankly, it's already a great price, and is almost always gonna be the cheaper option. The winner for this one is the Pace 2. One of the key differences between the two watches is music support. The Pace 2 really only comes in one version. Yes, you can get strap and color options, more on that in a minute, but regardless of which of these options you choose, the functionality of the watch is gonna be the same, and music is not part of that functionality. When it comes to the 245, there are two versions. There's the regular version and there's the music version. No prizes for guessing that the music version is the one that's gonna let you store music on the watch. You can do this using Deezer, Amazon Music or Spotify. Alternatively, you can use the Garmin Express app on your desktop to load music onto the watch directly. In order to use the streaming services, you will need their premium accounts to allow you to download the music so that you can play it offline. I should also point out it does work for audiobooks and podcasts. If having music on your running watch is a deal breaker for you, then it's gonna to have to be the 245. The winner of this round is the 245. The 245 is available in two body colors, white and black, and has a choice of five different strap colors, white, black, aqua, gray, and Merlot. The combination of these colors depends on whether you go for the music or the non-music variant of the watch. The Pace 2 is also available in two body colors. They are white and navy, and in two strap colors in two different materials. Whichever color you choose, you will get the matching color strap in either nylon or silicon. Additional strap colors are available for both watches in loads of different colors and are sold separately. This one's a draw. Both watches have a similar design being as they are both round. They both feature standard quick release 20 millimeter watch straps and they are made from very similar materials. Personally, I happen to think that the 245 is slightly better looking than the Pace 2. This is mainly due to the fact that the Pace 2 has some unnecessary line detail printed on the glass, which I'm not a big fan of. I think it would look better if it didn't have it, but it wouldn't stop me picking one up. However, the winner of this one is the 245. There really is nothing to separate the two watches here. They both have a 1.2 inch 240 by 240 pixel always on memory LCD display. They are both covered with Gorilla Glass. Visibility in direct sunlight of the screen is excellent and the resolution is fine. They're not gonna compare to something like the OLED screen of an Apple Watch, but it's fine. This one's a draw. The 245 features GPS, heart rate monitor, a compass, an accelerometer, and a blood oxygen meter. The Pace 2 has everything but the blood oxygen meter, so I'm gonna have to give this one to the 245. The Pace 2 has two physical controls, 
the back button and the digital dial. The back button is used to go back as you might expect as well as access to a quick shortcuts menu which you can customize in the settings. It can also be used to activate the backlight. Personally, I wish there was some additional control over how the backlight works. Having the option for it to turn on automatically whenever you receive a notification, for instance. In fact, given the choice, I would have it work exactly the same as it does on the 245, including the dedicated light button. In any case, the button has a nice clicky feel and is much better than that of the 245. More on that in a minute. The Pace 2's other control is the dial. This is similar to Apple's digital crown. It's a rotating dial and button combo. You can whiz through large data sets and long menus with ease, and there's no need to move your finger to another button to confirm the choice. I am a fan. The 245 has what has become fairly standard across these type of devices, which is the five button layout. Featuring a dedicated light button, up and down buttons, a back button, and a start stop slash confirm button. All but the back button pull double duty, accessing additional menus or functions on top of those that are already assigned. The five button layout is tried and tested, and it works great. But whenever I'm scrolling through long lists of data or long menus, I kind of wish I had that dial just to speed things up. Using the up and down buttons can get just a little bit tedious, not to mention the fact that these buttons just are not satisfying to press. If you watched my original 245 review, you're probably shouting at the screen, that's not what you said last time. If you haven't watched it, I will link it up here and down here. I've even had people comment to tell me how wrong I am, and I can now tell you that I agree with them. Comparing the 245 buttons to the back button on the Pace 2 is night and day. The 245 buttons are terrible. They're mushy and they have no positive feedback when you press them. The winner of this one is the Pace 2. Battery life on the 245 will vary wildly depending on how you use it. For example, I usually run 20K twice a week for a total of 40K with GPS and music over Bluetooth. Each 20K takes me a little under an hour and a half. So that's a total of around three hours of GPS and music. I have steps tracked automatically and sleep tracking and heart rate monitoring turned on. But because of the current restrictions, I'm not really tracking any other sports. And aside from the odd notification and timer, that's pretty much all I'm using the watch for. I would say I'm charging the watch about once every four to five days. Each 20K run uses about 45% of the battery life. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less. But all in all, I think the battery life of the 245 is good. The Pace 2 though, well, the Pace 2 is something else. What I should say is that obviously this isn't a particularly fair test because the Pace 2 doesn't have music and I personally have never tested the 245 for battery life without music. I always run with GPS and music turned on. That said, the battery life on the Pace 2 is bonkers. In my original review of the Pace 2, which if you haven't seen it, I will link it up here and down here, I was able to get over two weeks of usage before I needed to charge it. That was including over 10 hours of GPS tracking. The winner for this one is the Pace 2. The Pace 2 syncs with the Coros wearables app. The app features all the things you would expect to see. It has workout programs, training plans, navigation routes, achievements, a daily summary of your activity, detailed activity pages with comprehensive graphs that you can drill down into into the finest detail. It even has a muscle heat map for strength training, so you can really see how often you're skipping leg day. The 245 syncs with the well-established Garmin Connect app which unlike the Coros app is also accessible online. Garmin Connect also features a daily activity summary, but you're gonna get some extra things on this that you don't get in the Coros wearables app. Things like Garmin's body battery, stress and respiration. Another area featured in the Garmin Connect app and not in the Coros wearables app is the challenges section. This was primarily based around step challenges until quite recently where they've begun to add 
running and cycling challenges as well. There's also the ability to create your own challenges amongst you and your connections. If you wanna know more about the Garmin Connect app, I've made a full walkthrough of it. I will link it up here and down here. Workout programs are also available in the Garmin Connect app. There's a selection of 50 plus pre-made workouts for you to choose from, and you can download those directly in the app. Whereas on the Coros side, you're gonna to have to visit the Coros website to download their selection of workouts. Right now, the selection that Coros has is around 18, so not as many as available on the Garmin app. Custom workouts work in a very similar way to the way they work in the Coros app. The only difference here is that you're gonna be able to choose from seven different activities versus four on the Coros app. The Garmin Connect app also allows you to create a custom activity, which the Coros one does not. The implementation, however, on the Coros app is much better, especially when it comes to creating a workout program for strength training. Whilst both have an extensive list of exercises to choose from, Garmin Connect just gives you a giant list of exercises sorted alphabetically. You can search them and it holds your most recent ones, but compare that to the Coros app and there's no competition. In the Coros app, each exercise is categorized by body part, muscle, and equipment. You can also create custom exercises. Each of the exercises has a diagram next to it so you can see exactly what it is. Then when you select it, you get an animation of the exercise, a description, an explanation of how to carry out the exercise, tips, what body parts and muscles are affected by the exercise, and what equipment, if any, will be required. It's extremely comprehensive. If you'd like a more in-depth look at the Coros Wearables app, I've done a complete walkthrough of that as well, and I will link it up here and down here. When it comes to training plans, there's not much to choose between the two apps, either in terms of the number of pre-made plans or the implementation of custom plans. Coros currently offers eight running plans and Garmin offers three. They also offer six cycling plans, whereas Coros currently don't offer any. Third party app integration on the Coros app includes Strava, which is gonna satisfy most people. But they also offer other popular services like training peaks, as well as providing Apple health support. In total, at the time of this recording, Coros currently offers integration for nine third party apps. Compare this to Garmin Connect, who currently only offer five. Again, Strava and Apple Health are present, alongside my personal favorite, Nike Run Club. If you're a long time user like me, then it's great to be able to sync your Garmin runs with your Nike Run Club account so that they show up on your feed and count towards your challenges. Both of the apps have strengths and weaknesses and they are both updated on a regular basis. So this one is a draw. Both watches have had multiple updates since I did my initial reviews. The 245 has been mostly in the form of bug fixes, but on the Pace 2, there's been a couple of big updates which have added functionality to the watch, including a recent water sports update. The winner for this one is the Pace 2. The 245 has around 17 activity profiles covering the most common sports like running, cycling and swimming. But it doesn't feature a triathlon mode before you ask. What you can do on the 245 however is create custom activities which mean if there's an activity that you'd like to track that isn't present on the 245 you can make a custom activity for it. Again, this isn't gonna work for triathlons. I've been asked this before. You're not gonna be able to create a custom activity for triathlons. If you wanna know more about how this is done, then I have made a video about custom activities on the 245. Again, I will link it up here and down here. The Pace 2 supports around the same number of activities as the 245, but it's missing that custom activity feature. Supported activities have expanded in recent months, however, as I mentioned before, so this number may grow. But the winner for this one is the 245. Both watches are pretty solid when it comes to GPS performance, with the Pace 2 just ahead when it comes to the speed at which it can acquire a GPS lock-on. The resulting GPS tracks from both watches are very similar and there's nothing to choose between them. Overall performance of the Pace 2 during my testing has been very reliable. In fact, I haven't had any connectivity issues 
or crashes whatsoever. The 245, however, has been a little less reliable. Garmin Connect had a very well publicized outage earlier last year. But aside from that, I have had and still do have multiple issues connecting my 245 when it comes to downloading and updating music. At other times, I've also been required to restart my 245 due to it freezing when acquiring a GPS signal. These bugs are by no means frequent. Well, the music's never really worked seamlessly, but they are frustrating nonetheless. The winner for this one is the Pace 2. Customization of both watches is fairly similar. You can customize the watch faces, where on the 245, the choice is almost infinite when you go to the Connect IQ store. Whereas back in Coros Land, you're limited to those that are supplied in the app. Currently, there are 37 options to choose from. Both have customizable shortcut menus for your most used functions, and both allow you to reorder and remove activities from your activities list. Where most of your customizing time will be spent is in your activity data screens. The Pace 2 has the edge here in terms of the number of data points you can display at any one time on your custom data pages. But the 245 gives you more choice in terms of actual data points you can choose from. On the Pace 2, you can customize each activity individually, choosing from four different frames with two, three, four, or six data fields across up to five pages across 46 different data points. This means you can display up to 30 different data points per activity at any one time. The 245 allows up to three custom data screens with up to four data fields per screen. Across 62 data points, giving you a maximum of 12 custom data points at any one time. But it also includes some additional pre-made screens. On top of your custom screens, you can add a heart rate gauge, a clock, a map, a virtual partner, and if you have the music version, you can add the music controls in there as well. The winner for this one is the 245. Both watches are limited to basic notifications for things like text messages, emails, and phone calls. The Pace 2 will only allow you to decline a phone call, whereas the 245 will allow you to answer the call but obviously you're gonna to have to take the call on your phone because there's no microphone built into the watch. If you have an Android phone, you'll be able to send predefined replies to text messages on the 245, but not with the Pace 2, and neither of them will let you reply on an iOS device. The Pace 2 gives you slightly more control over what notifications are delivered from your phone to the watch, allowing you to toggle on and off some apps specifically. All you get on the 245 is the option to have all notifications, calls and texts only, or calls only. They will of course both mirror the notification settings on your phone. This one is a draw. Both watches feature Ant Plus and Bluetooth for accessory connections, and they both have first party accessories that they can connect to. The 245 can connect to a range of Garmin heart rate chest monitors, as well as some third party ones. The Pace 2 can also connect to some third party chest straps, but they don't make their own. Coros do make the Coros Pod, however. This is an additional sensor which you can connect to your watch, which will give you some more metrics around things like cadence and stride length. If you want to know more about the Coros Pod, I made a video about it. I will link it up here and down here. The Coros Pod is very similar to the Garmin Running Dynamics Pod, which I haven't tested, but this one is a draw. Now, if you've been keeping score, by now you will have noticed that the 245 and the Pace 2 are tied. This is completely unintentional, and in fact, I only realized that they were tied on score when I came to deciding who the overall winner should be. The real reason they're tied is that they're very similar, and I would have no problems recommending either watch to anyone thinking of picking one up. They are both great running watches. But I'm gonna have to pick a winner, and for me, the winner is this. This is the Garmin 245 and I think it just edges it. When I originally picked up the 245, I was looking for a watch that I could run with without using my phone that would still allow me to listen to music. And in the 245 music, I have exactly that. The implementation of music on the 245 
may not be perfect, but to be honest, I don't update my playlists all that often. The 245 tracks all the things that I'm interested in, and for the few that it didn't, I was able to create custom activities to track those as well. So where does that leave the Pace 2? Well, if music and a blood oxygen meter are deal breakers for you, then you're going to have to go for the 245. But if they're not, then the Pace 2 is an excellent choice. It's cheaper, the battery life is stellar, and to be honest, it's the watch I more often than not recommend to people getting their first running watch. Let me know in the comments which one you think is the best. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.